So there's no question that the longest hitters on the PGA Tour and all the long drive pros, they definitely have a jump on the average guy because although they might be swinging the same distance down to the ball from here to here, the time is a lot smaller because they're simply accelerating the club much faster. But it's not as simple as just flooring the gas pedal and throwing and whipping the club as fast as they can. There's a subtle and a little more hidden source of that acceleration that you can also tap into. Let's talk about it right after this. So there's no question that the longest guys on tour, long drive pros, they're very adept, they're very explosive at whipping the club around the hands like that. However, they have a hidden ace up their sleeve usually that involves the track of the handle that you, when you learn it, you can also tap into and pick up more acceleration, therefore more club speed at the ball. Now, when you can get the track of the handle on an efficient path, it's going to help you create more acceleration. So if you look at this, we call this parametric acceleration. If I just send this club in a pendulum, so the handle is staying still in the center and that provides, you know, a nice, pretty efficient acceleration, especially, see, as I'm pushing on it, I'm simulating applying force to the grip. So here, if we just let the club come down and swing with gravity, it's going to hit the ball a certain distance. And then, of course, we get it up to the top again, and I apply a pushing force here. I can get the club to accelerate the more force, but you can get more acceleration than this if you think out of the box, and that means the handle does not need to stay in this fixed position like this. But instead, watch this, if I were to just drop this club with gravity, but I was going to pull the club handle up vertically. Watch what happens. I won't apply any force, I'll just let it drop. But if I pull upwards, see that I don't, I get an, I should be getting a fairly equal response on the other side, given minus whatever my friction is at the fingers here. But I should be getting a pretty mirrored response at the other end of this. But watch what happens now when I, again, when I pull the handle upwards, I get this club to accelerate faster. Therefore, you're seeing it rise up past the horizontal where gravity would typically tell you it should go. So I have applied an acceleration to the head of the club simply by pulling it upwards. Now, I can apply an even greater acceleration to the club without pushing on it, on the grip. That would be the uncocking force applying to the grip. I could pull the club, the handle of the club upwards and backwards, kind of at a 45 degree angle, and you watch what happens now. I can get the club to almost spin around itself without pushing on it at all, just a gravity drop and an application of acceleration because of what the handle's doing. I'm going to pull it up and back, and if I pull it abruptly enough, I can get that thing to circle all the way around. So drop, but I get a parametric acceleration. The shaft and the head are simply responding to the line of pull, trying to line up with the line of pull at the grip at the moment of impact. The center of mass of that club just always seeking to line up with whatever direction that handle is moving in at the moment. So now how can we take advantage of this in a golf swing? Well, so up and back, up and back is the vectors we'd want to try to move this in. So the back part's going to be really difficult because uh, you're not really going to make the club go in reverse. Well, we certainly don't see that in videos. We certainly do see the up though. So the up can be created this part can be created and that would accelerate the club when the handle of the club comes down and then arcs back up again this way pulls back up this way 
Now the way you're going to do that is two things you can use, mechanical things you can use in your golf swing. Number one is going to be the going from a flexed left knee position to an extended left knee this way. And that causes the entire left side to raise up, gets the left shoulder higher. And in addition to that, we can also pull the left shoulder higher. And this is what most long hitters do. They straighten the leg and they pull this shoulder up. And those two things pulls the handle up. And of course, the head responds by getting whipped around. Now, we talked a second ago about also the handle pulling backwards, given acceleration, and how that's not necessarily a phenomenon that we see when we watch slow motion swings of good golfers. However, there's no question that we see a slowing down of the handle, which is kind of in the direction of pulling backwards. See, this one I would have a negative acceleration of the handle or acceleration this way. And the same thing with slowing down. Slowing down is effectively accelerating the handle in the opposite direction. Not enough for it to actually back up, but certainly enough for it to slow down. And that is definitely the phenomenon we see in better swings in both the PGA Tour and in long drive is that handle comes down and suddenly it slows down. The handle actually slows its advance right through the hitting zone just for a split second. So between the slowing down of the handle and the pulling up of the handle this way, that's how you can tap into a greater source of acceleration besides just the application of force to whip the club head around the handle. Now let's take a look at a swing in slow motion and let's see if we can spot those two components. So you can see in slow mo there is that I'm coming into the impact zone. My left knee is going from a flex position like this about here. And now it's starting to straighten. And that's causing my entire left side to get tall, forcing my left shoulder to raise further away from the ground and also go backwards as my torso turns. And that's just pulling the handle back this way and up, causing the club head to accelerate. Secondly, if we, can, if we had enough frames to look at, you would also see that the handle does not move in the same, at the same distance in each frame. So it's not moving at an equal velocity. Instead, it's reaching its greatest, greatest advance in this range here. But then all of a sudden, the handle starts to move in smaller increments each frame, which means it is not quite traveling as fast as it was earlier in the downswing. Therefore, the handle must have decelerated. Deceleration positively is another way to say acceleration negatively. The same idea as pulling this grip up and back. So I can produce so compared to just nothing at all, a gravity drop, so I'm not producing, I'm producing, what, uh, 32 feet per second squared of acceleration. Well, I can virtually double that or more just by pulling up and back on the handle. I can get this thing to spin all the way around despite not applying any force into the handle, just manipulating the handle up and back is increasing almost doubling the acceleration. So if you're looking for more speed and distance, of course, without having to try to swing as hard as somebody in long drive, then by all means you want to 
take a look at these two ideas and see if you can apply them into your golf swing. Hey, I'm Steve. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you'll support me in my journey towards helping 100,000 subscribers. Hit the subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment down below. And if I don't see you in the next video, I will see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.